Successful leadership and management of a school no longer reside solely with the head teacher and a small number of senior colleagues. Today, middle leaders such as heads of department are expected to become just that, leaders as well as teachers and learners. To help understand what this means in practice, we'll examine the leadership strategies of two heads of department in two very different schools. I feel that as teachers we're all professionals um, and therefore, you know, being a head of department doesn't mean that suddenly you're elevated onto a pedestal. You have to make sure that what you're asking your colleagues to do, you would very much do yourself. Um, and that sometimes is doing tedious tasks and sometimes that is being able to communicate your vision and, al and, and allowing them to sort of help realise that too. And I found that as head of history. School is not a place where you can sit back on your laurels and not move forward. It, it will be noticed and is noticed. But luckily I don't have many team members that aren't willing to move forward and change things and look at things in different ways. But the National College of School Leadership has found that middle leaders face a paradox. Whilst many enjoy increasing autonomy, often based on high levels of trust, they also face rigorous, systematic and challenging accountability. Business leaders can face the same challenges. Sir Digby Jones, Director General of the Confederation of British Industry. You've got to be a ruthless prioritizer and you've got to be a quality delegator. Because the one thing you can't prioritize or delegate is leadership. You can't delegate leadership. Leadership is a personal thing, it's you. The book stops with you and you are there. And the very reason you're there is because you're a leader and, and welcome to life. And if you don't like it, get out because it's not going to change. People are going to look to you for leadership. Yet increasingly, the idea that leadership comes from one person in charge of others is being redefined. Leadership qualities can be encouraged in many different people and appear in many different ways. There has been a huge shift again over the last seven years. We have moved from subject coordination to subject leadership that's a big difference and for some people they haven't had the opportunity to acquire those skills of leadership you know, fundamentally they are all teachers they didn't go into the job because they wanted to be leaders they went in to teach so the assumption is that somewhere along the line almost through osmosis they've actually gained these skills and maybe they haven't you've got twice and then you get to so how twice. do middle leaders refocus skills and build their leadership capacity rob ford has been head of history at riding school in south gloucestershire for 3 years he models his leadership style around the notion of shared or distributed leadership. An expert in this area is Professor Ron Ritchie of the University of the West of England. It's not just delegation. That may be one element of it, but it's more powerful than that because it's extending the boundaries of leadership beyond those people who have leadership titles. Okay, it's not just subject leaders, head teachers, deputy head teachers. It's actually looking for the potential in all adults in school so that you get a holistic feel to this, that the whole is more than the sum of the parts, that you use the strengths and enthusiasms of all the individuals in the school, in the collective interests of the school. I don't think one individual leader in a school can possibly deal with the complexity of the future that we will face in a very short time. Therefore, it seems to me the only way forward is to look at how we make the most of middle leaders, but not just of middle leaders, of all those in school whose leadership capacity we can enhance and develop. And actually, I'd want to include pupils in that as well, because I think leadership by pupils, uh, uh, as well as adults, is part of what the distributed leadership uh, concept invites us to explore. Extending the boundaries of leadership allowed the formation of an international education group at the school who meet regularly to discuss initiatives. The idea is that sharing leadership frees up each individual to bring ideas and take risks, knowing they have the support of the group as a whole. 
this is an opportunity to get flags and posters and, and, and certainly for languages if you want us to use some of that money for those things okay then we can do that and, and actually sort of you know help help get the sort of corridors and, and, and classrooms looking really sort of good as well I think if we're going to have this newsletter going on, that that really needs to be driven by the kids as well. Yeah, because yeah, absolutely. it's not yeah. something that we can take on ourselves on top of everything else that we do. But if we've got an international education group of students who are willing to do the the production, the editing, and then actually sending it off and doing yeah. all of that, that'd be really good. But, um, this style of shared leadership is encouraged across the school, the and now Ridings will be one of only 70 schools in the country offering the International Baccalaureate in 2006, demonstrating their commitment to international education. And it all started with Rob Ford organising a Europe Day in school and getting others to join in. Essentially it is about motivation, um, but also it's about being able to communicate your vision. And I think we started off small enough, myself and a few colleagues, and then suddenly one day people came into school on Monday morning and they saw the school bedecked in flags. What's this about? You know, why is the canteen offering a themed cuisine? This video conference, and I'm having kids talk to my lesson, they've been speaking to Americans this afternoon. Um, you know, and so suddenly, um, you know, we were having this message spread around the school. The group have the ability to communicate with and influence others both attributes encouraged in middle leaders. Rob Ford also introduced video conferencing to the school. Today, Year 9 at Riding School link up with students from a Norwegian school. We're going to start off by talking about um, who we are and we're going to introduce ourselves. Um, so, who wants to go first? I'm 13 and in Year 9 at Ridings. Um, in my spare time, I like to go shopping with my friends and Listen to music. I'm 14 years old and I live here in Street. My hobbies are guiding, play drums, handball, sing in a choir, play in a band called Rock of Soup, and be with friends. The approach taken here by the international group can be a model for others. Supported by his head, Rob Ford is a middle leader who's focused on communicating and influencing staff and pupils and in turn is influenced by them. What I've been um, able to witness during all of this is that leadership comes from those without the titles and without the actual status and the pedestals. And I think that's what actually drives the best schools, that um, you know, colleagues know what the school is about and they believe and they, and, 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 and they act out that ethos, whatever the school motto may be. There's no shortage of publications and training courses available which promise to grow successful middle leaders, some of which revolves around learning-centred leadership. But if you're focusing on the pupil experience of learning, remember that it can also relate to yourself. Schools are all about learning. For a long time, it was very much about the pupils' learning. Certainly there has been a sea change over the last five years where people now working in a teaching and a support capacity in schools are recognising that teach in order to be an effective teacher and a leader in a school, you cannot stand still because things change so quickly, you've got to update your own learning. And it is, we have all sorts of expectations about what are uh, good ways of teaching young people and how young people learn. Well, the rules are no different for the teachers. Marnie Whedon, Head of Maths at the City Academy St George in Bristol, is well aware of the need to do this. She's been a middle leader for three years. Learning is central to her role as a leader and a teacher. What did we end up with there? Thanks for your hand up though, Kieran. It was appreciated and other people should follow it. Okay. She champions a culture of learning based on building learning power, which promotes and celebrates the process of learning. In addition to curriculum achievement, pupils are rewarded on the basis of the four R's criteria, resilience, resourcefulness, responsibility, and reciprocity. Professor Guy Claxton from Bristol University devised this system with both pupils and teachers in mind. I mean, it seems to me to be very simple that learning and being at ease with learning, being confident at learning, is the one skill area that is never going to go out of date and it feeds all the others. Being a learner is the portal 
to everything else, isn't it? To being an effective teacher, to learning difficult concepts in chemistry, to practicing your ability to take penalties on the football field, that, that, that your attitudes, your core attitudes to yourself as a learner fuel or undermine whatever your own learning endeavor should be. So something like the learning to learn approach, the building learning power approach, can't but support the development of any other more specific initiative when it comes to looking at leadership in school. The more comfortable we are as learners, the better we are going to be able to take on board whatever initiative is coming our way. All right, talk to me about responsibility. What does responsibility look like? Marnie is a firm advocate of the concept of building learning power so and believes it has a strong impact on her own teaching and leadership style. I think the culture of the four R's and of the learning capacities, etc., is something that is across the school board. It isn't just something that's uh, with the learners. Um, it impacts on even the schemes of work. It impacts on the development of how we deliver so therefore the teaching in general, because the teaching obviously is directly related to the learning. So um, the more that we can put skills, and I think it's to do with the fact that what we're trying to do is teach the whole person, right. not just mathematics in my case. Um, it's about sort of teaching and nurturing that whole person so that when they leave, they have more of a role within society and within the environment that they live in, and more responsibility and sort of in life so that when they go to work, and sit exams and all sorts of different things. So yes, we're having to sort of change and develop consistently our teaching, our schemes of work, the way we deliver uh, in order to sort of incorporate this in their learning. To help staff and pupils understand this emphasis on learning, they've created learning families throughout school, which meet once a week to review and reflect on their learning. Respect. What does that look like in a lesson? What would it look like if we were looking for it as a skill? Go for it. Respect for the teacher. OK, and I think that's excellent. And that is usually the statement that I hear coming from people's mouths. Can anyone elaborate on that? Go on, Mark. Respecting environments and not damaging stuff. Yeah. And at the end of each module, pupils can receive Learning Hero Awards for achievement in building their learning power. Since the Academy adopted this system and offered incentives to GCSE students, the exam pass rate has gone from 26% to 53% in three years. They believe that this focus on building learning capacity has contributed to the improvement. Riding School also see the benefits of shared leadership moving forward exciting initiatives in international education. But whatever strategy you adopt as a middle leader, take heart from the words of Sir Digby Jones. Everybody who has reached a head of department level in, in education has it within them in some way to lead, to set an example, to inspire, to create, to take it forward. They would do well to learn off the head teacher because watch them. How do they do that? Why did they do that? You know, they're not perfect. People look to leaders these days in a politically correct environment and go, oh, they're rubbish because they're not perfect. Leaders aren't perfect. One of the reasons they're good at leading is because they're human beings and they relate brilliantly to imperfect human beings, because they are one. <laughs>